Hello dear students, I hope uh, all of you have reached your home safely and uh, having a comfortable life with your family members. I hope you and all your family members are safe and uh, you are following the guidelines and advices of uh, the government and the administration so that not only you remain safe and uh, all your friends and family uh, remain safe. This is a difficult time and uh, we have to handle it carefully. Now uh, I just want to inform you the MHRD and UGC have uh, advised our university to conduct the courses uh, online. Uh, basically you are at home and uh, maybe uh, you know this is the right time to spend some time on your studies so the vice chancellor has advised us to, to send you uh, you know videos and study material online so i was thinking that uh, through a couple of uh, video lectures i will uh, you know uh, basically cover the rest of the syllabus for our econometrics course so coming to the simultaneous uh, equations models which uh, we have already covered in first one or two classes uh, we have basically covered the problem of simultaneity we have uh, um, discussed what is the implication of uh, having uh, you know endogenous variable on the right hand side particularly one of the assumption of classical linear regression model that the correlation or covariance between explanatory variable and stochastic error term is likely to be violated when uh, endogenous variable appear on the right hand side and uh, in that context uh, the as per the gauss markov theorem the ols estimates in presence of simultaneity will no more be blue then uh, we had discussed how to identify basically uh, the conditions of identification we had discussed using order condition which uh, suggested that uh, the capital K minus small k should be equal to small m minus 1 for an equation in a simultaneous equation model to be exactly identified here capital K is uh, total number of predetermined variables in the simultaneous equation system and uh, small k is the number of predetermined variables in the particular equation for which we are checking whether the equation is identified or not so if and of course a small m is the number of endogenous variable that is appearing in that particular equation for which we are checking whether that equation is identified or not so if capital k minus small k is equal to small m minus 1 then that equation is exactly identified so in that condition we had discussed we can obtain unique estimates of the coefficients for all the coefficients of the structural equation from the reduced form equation okay and if small k minus i mean if capital k minus small k is less than equal to small m minus 1 then that particular equation is not identified so in that case we will not able to obtain all the structural coefficients of the structural equation from the reduced form equation so there will be difficulty in estimating the uh, that particular equation when the equation is not identified applying OLS uh, then uh, you know we had of course discussed about the uh, rank condition the rank condition is the sufficient condition and the order condition is the necessary condition today uh, we'll be discussing about uh, the indirect least square procedure for estimating simultaneous equation system okay the indirect least square procedure is very simple but this procedure we can apply when a particular equation in a simultaneous equation system is exactly identified okay so if an equation is over identified then we will not able to okay now if you recall we had uh, discussed about the market model basically the supply equation and demand equation and the equilibrium condition and we had discussed four varieties of models 
uh, under this. If you remember, we had a model 1 or model A, which, uh, which look like this, where the demand equation is uh, quantity demand is equal to A plus BP, where P is price and A plus A and B are the coefficients. And supply equation was QS is equal to C plus DP. Okay, this is very simple model. And of course, this is the equilibrium uh, condition where quantity demand is equal to quantity supply. And if you come down here, this graph basically presents the equality between demand and supply and you have A which is the equilibrium point. Now, in this model, we had discussed that we are not able to identify demand or supply equation because we have a one equilibrium point where demand is equal to supply. So at that point, it is both demand, I mean that point is appearing both on the demand equation and supply equation. And we have no other way of identifying whether it is a demand equation or supply equation from this. So here, if you are applying order condition, there, are, there is basically no predetermined variable. So capital case is equal to zero in this model. Okay. Whereas each equation has two endogenous variables. Small m is equal to 2 in both cases. Okay. So if you are talking about capital K minus small k is equal to small m minus 1. So the left hand side capital K minus small k 0 minus 0 is equal to 0. Right hand side 2 minus 1 is 1. So left hand side is less than right hand side for both the equations. So none of the equation is identified. Okay. So here of course we cannot apply the indirect least square. I will come to indirect least square procedure. I will explain that. Before that, we have to check if the equation is exactly identified in a simultaneous equation system. Then we can apply indirect least square to that. So the first step is to check whether that equation is exactly identified or not. Now come to model B, which uh, we had uh, discussed, discussed in the class. So in the model B, the demand equation has an additional explanatory variable now. So it is A plus BP plus EY, where Y is income and Y is the exogenous variable. Okay. Our quantity and price continue to be endogenous variable, two endogenous variable, and Y is a predetermined variable, exogenous variable. Okay. And the quantity quantities, I mean supply equation remains the same. So if you draw the graph, your red line is supply equation, your black line is demand equation. Now, this demand equation shifts up, I mean, rightward or leftward, depending on the value of y. Say when y was y0, we have this black line, okay, as the demand equation. When y increases from y0 to y1, the demand equation shifts from this black line to the blue line on the right. And when income falls from y0 to y2, the blue line shifts to the left, okay. So, this, with this, with variation of income, we can have, you know, shifting of the demand curve. So, this, this will help us to identify the supply equation. Basically, for various different values of income, you have different demand curves and that will help us to identify the supply equation. Okay. So, this also we can understand by applying the order condition. If you are applying order condition for the supply equation, in supply capital K here is 1, we have one predetermined variable. In supply equation, there is no predetermined variable. So small k is equal to 0. So 1 minus 0 is equal to 1, the left hand side. And there are two endogenous variables in the supply equation, Q1, P. So small m is equal to 2 uh, minus 1, so is equal to 1. So going by the order condition, that is capital K minus small k is equal to small m minus 1 here. So supply equation is exactly identified. So here we can apply ILS indirect least square to supply equation. Whether demand equation is identified or not, if you apply the same order condition, you will find that demand equation is not identified. Okay. Now let us come to model C. In model C, demand curve is same as model A. Now supply curve is different where we are introducing an additional predetermined variable that is pt minus 1 as an explanatory variable, explanatory variable for the supply equation. With this, going by the earlier 
argument you can see that this is demand curve and this red line is the supply curve so when pt minus 1 is 0 okay then this is the red line when uh, the pt minus 1 increases to say pt minus 1 then it is shifting to the right and when pt minus 1 2 is less than pt minus 1 0 it is shifting towards the left so with the different values of pt minus 1 we have different supply curves okay and that helps us to identify the demand curve okay so uh, similar to the earlier case applying order condition to the demand equation you can find capital k minus small k is 1 minus 0 is equal to 1 and small m minus 1 is equal to 1 so the left hand side is equal to right hand side so here the equation is exactly identified which equation it is demand equation and the order condition if you apply to supply equation you will find that this is supply equation is not identified now let us come to model d where we have one explanatory variable each on the demand curve as well as supply curve compared to model a you can see here in model a we have a plus bpt plus eyt yt is a predetermined variable here exogenous variable in supply equation is c plus dpt plus f pt minus 1 where pt minus 1 is a predetermined variable okay now once we add one predetermined variable each in demand and supply equation then you can see that uh, we can identify both demand and supply equation in this case and this is also explained here by applying the order condition and uh, you can see that applying order condition we can see that both the equations are exactly identified so we can apply ils to both demand and supply equation uh, for model d okay so how to apply ils indirectly square i'm explaining here simply uh, we'll uh, use the condition equilibrium condition that quantity demand is equal to quantity supply so the from model d the value of quantity demand is here and the value of quantity supply is here so by you know uh, putting uh, the value of a plus b p p t plus e y t in place of quantity demanded and c plus d p t plus a p t minus 1 in place of quantity supply i have this line 2 and what here i'm trying to do i'm trying to bring p t one side and uh, keep uh, all other things on the right hand side basically you have one endogenous variable here p t which is and the related terms on the left hand side and right hand side we have coefficients and you know basically the predetermined variable along with their coefficients so with uh, simple mathematical manipulation i come to line number four here line number one two three four here where pt is expressed as c minus a over b minus d so this is like the intercept plus f over b and b minus d as the coefficient of pt minus one and minus e over b minus d as a coefficient of y2 right so if i write this uh, complex term as uh, pi 1 this complex term as pi 2 this complex term as pi 3 i have this equation which we call a reduced form equation so basically in the reduced form equation all the variables on the right hand side are predetermined variable okay so this is a reduced form equation and these original equations of model d like qd as a function of pt and yt qs as a function of pt and pt minus 1 these are called structural equations okay and uh, as i said we obtained this uh, reduced form equation by you know using the equality condition and through simple mathematical manipulation now knowing the value of p from the reduced form equation we can place this in any of these structural equation either quantity demand and quite quantity supply so what I have done here, I have put the value of Pt from uh, this reduced form equation in uh, quantity demand equation. Then I get uh, with mathematical manipulation line 2, line 3 and finally I will get uh, pi 4 plus pi 5 Pt plus pi 6 Yt. This is, this is another redu second reduced form equation. So now you can see we can apply OLS to either of these reduced form equation. We don't have any problem because on the right hand side we have predetermined variable. There is no endogenous variable on the right hand side. So uh, you know um, uh, the none of the uh, particularly the assumption of 
the covariance between the explanatory variable and the stochastic error term being zero is uh, true here. So that assumption is not violated. So we can apply all this to this equation, this uh, reduced form equation as well as to this reduced form equation. Okay, where basically uh, here this in this reduced form equation we have q as the dependent variable and on the right hand side we have pi 4 pi 5 pt minus 1 plus pi 6 yt okay so we can apply these reduced form equation by applying OLS now after estimating these equations by applying OLS the indirect least square procedure what it does it tries to get the value of a b c d e f from those pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 pi 4 etc okay so I'll explain how we we'll do that uh, from here, a, a here. So basically, after estimating pi one, pi two, pi three, pi four, etc., if you see their uh, relationship, you will you will see that b is equal to pi five over pi two. B is equal to pi five over pi two. Look at here. What is pi five? Pi five is basically b pi two, right? So that way b we can find we can basically estimate as the ratio between pi phi over pi 2. Similarly e you can get as pi 6 minus pi 3 because pi 3 plus e is equal to pi 6 right. Similarly you can have other relationship we can get a as pi 4 minus b uh, pi 1 you can have f as pi 7 over pi 3 multiplied by e you can have d is equal to b minus f over pi 2 c as a plus b minus whole into pi 1 okay so basically after getting pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 etc uh, by applying ols okay using the relationship between pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 pi 4 etc we'll able to obtain a b c d e f basically we can obtain the structural coefficients, the coefficients of the structural equations from the reduced form equations uh, and this procedure is known as indirect.